Reno, Steve Maven from Rabbitohs Radio. How are you going, mate? Good, mate. How are you? Good, buddy. You scored that iconic try in 2012 at the SFS. Can yep. you tell me what it means to you to play against the Roosters? Um, yeah, obviously, born and raised in Redfern. Um, grown up here my whole life. Um, number of stories that I've heard over the years. And, um, yeah, obviously played junior reps for South and uh, went to school with blokes from the Roosters. And, um, yeah, continually had that banter and that rivalry all the way through uh, my juniors right through to first grade. So, um, look, it's all about territory for us. Uh, they, they try and steal it, take everything from us. So, um, look, for us, it's, it's about going out there and making our fans and, and members proud and, um, you know, play the best football we can. And it was always nice to get one over them. Well, they started 0-2. They've got a couple of players back. What have we got to do to beat them, mate? Uh, we've just got to do the simple things right. Uh, it's probably going to be wet or, you know, pretty slippery out there. Um, you know, come Friday night, we're not expecting an easy game. So um, we've got to do the little things right. Obviously, we've got to hold the ball, um, kick to the corners, build pressure. Um, you know, play a, a low percentage style of footy that's going to, um, you know, put the pressure on them and, and make them come up with a few errors. Uh, we're hearing that Troy Dagan might be in the team. Uh, I've watched his 2019 highlights package and he looks pretty awesome. What can you tell us about him, mate? Yeah, he's a, he's a cool, calm, collected sort of kid. Um, doesn't really talk too much. He's, he's a bit quiet, but once he gets out there on the field, he's, uh, he's a different beast. Um, he's, he's probably a bit similar to Cody Walker. So, um, look, I'm, I'm excited for him to, to get his first jumper and, um, yeah, I'm excited to get out there and get a game with him. What are his strengths, Renaud? Uh, he's probably his running game is his strength for me. Um, look, he's dangerous when he takes the line on. He's, he's got a good show and go. Um, you know, he's got nice hands as well. So, um, left footer, nice kicking game. Uh, take a bit of pressure off me. So, um, no, I'm just excited and, and looking forward to getting out there and playing with him. Pardon the ignorance, Adam, but have you spent much time alongside him in trial matches or anything like that? Because obviously it's, it's hard to form a new combination at the best of times, let alone, um, you know, at short notice. Uh, haven't played a game with him, haven't spent any minutes on the field with him um, from a trial or anything, but, but we, we spent plenty of time and, um, on the training paddock, getting out there, getting our combinations right. We had a great session today. Um, you know, we get another chance to get out there for captain's run and, and nail down those last few preparations. But, um, look, we, we get along pretty easy, me and Dargs. Uh, we get around on the field, um, you know, very similar. We've got similar style of play. So, um, look, I compliment his game. He compliments mine and um, I'm sure nothing... Will bother us too much on the field. And mate, just on today, is was James Roberts preparing to play on Friday night? Do you expect him to have him out there alongside you? Um, he, he jumped in and done a few reps. Uh, I'm not too sure what Wayne's thinking yet, so uh, I'll leave that up to the coach. Um, he's looking pretty good at the moment, though. So um, look, he's he's happy and he's he's healthy. So that's the main focus for us. If if Wayne plays him on the weekend, um, it's an added bonus. Hey, Adam. Question. And so if I can go, we'll ask Tom a similar question. Um, just in regards, obviously, it's been a tough couple of weeks for the Rabbitohs with a few other things off field. I mean, how much of a boost was it just to get James back in and around you guys uh, over the weekend? And I'd imagine you all would have been very happy just to see him again, I guess. Yeah, he puts smiles on faces when he turns up. He's a, he's a likeable character. Um, you know, he's always full of energy when he's around us boys and um, having a good time. So, um, look, he's a big part of our team. He can, he can score points and, and create... A few dramas for the other side from anywhere on the park. So, um, look, it's it's just important that we got him back healthy and, mm. and happy. Um, when you get him back on the footy field, it's a bonus for us. So, um, yeah, just glad he's back. Hey, Adam, Rob Canning here, mate. Um, you know, it wasn't wasn't a smooth period, this COVID, for the Rabbitohs. Just being a first-year captain, was it um, challenging for yourself? And Tom said he's really happy with how everyone's responded and, and are coming out of it. No, it's been, it's been all right, to be honest. Um, obviously, a few incidents and whatnot that's out of my control. Um, you know, all I can do is get around the boys and support them and uh, make sure they're doing all right. But, um, you know, Wayne's excellent with that sort of stuff. He, he wears most of the brunt for a lot of the things. And, um, you know, we've been communicating pretty regularly. So, um, look, for me, it's about making sure I'm in best physical shape possible and, um, you know, I'm mentally ready and I'm, I'm switched on to get the boys around the park and, and lead from the front. I've got a loaded question for you, mate. Um, everyone used to think that Manly were the most hated team in the comp, but there's, there's plenty who reckon the Roosters are these days. Would you agree with that? 
hundred percent with you. <laughs> Adam, uh, Michelle from. Here. Adam Michelle from Seven. Um, we just talked about that. Um, I guess that the, the tough period you guys have gone uh, gone through in the last couple of weeks with various things. How have you uh, sort of you've had to sort of step up in that leadership role? How have you found the experience as a leader? Oh, we well, can't do too much when we're on lockdown. So um, a lot of it's by phone, um, just checking in, making sure players are okay. Um, you know, touching base regularly and making sure everything's all right. Um, we've got a number of young boys here to. Um, you know, fresh in the first grade or fresh into the squad. So um, first and foremost, make sure they're all right at home and, and doing all the right things. And then obviously for myself, um, it's a pretty busy period of my life. Uh, I've got four kids and they're off school. So um, <laughs> drama's at home, but um, it's all good. Adam, Chaps from Rabbitohs Radio, mate. With playing in front of no crowds, do you think the Roosters will hold an advantage seeing that you've been playing in front of no crowds so often? <laughs> yeah, I've heard this, this joke getting around. It's actually pretty funny. Um, Look, it's going to be different for everyone, but um, they might hold a slight advantage, obviously, with past uh, jokes and all that going on. But um, look, things are, things are looking positive. Um, I hear Valandis talking about, um, you know, possibly getting fans as back as early as July 1. Um, so that, that'd be great for us. Uh, we, we value our, our fans and our members dearly. And, um, you know, we're very thankful for their support over the, um, not only the years, but um, over this tough time. And I don't know if you've got any idea about this, but the ball boy situation, um, is, it, is it going to be anyone in particular? Is it, you know, is it something you can use to your advantage? Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on there. Um, I think both sides will have a couple of players that have just missed out on selection, fill in and, and fill the role of the ball boys. So um, if we get a kick for touch and there's a couple of Roosters players on the other side, I might kick it further up into the grandstand. So um, <laughs> they might do the same with our boys. So uh, there'll, be, there'll be games out there in the field and, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to a good clash. Um, it's, Fatima, it's Fatima from The Telegraph here. Um, Tom just spoke about how sometimes it's important to take games like this one on Friday night a little bit personal. Is this a game that you're going to be taking personally? Um, look, it's, it's never hard to get up for a game against the Roosters. Um, it's always a fiery clash and um, things get pretty heated out there. So, um, look, for me, it's about going out there and doing my job and and making sure we get the best result possible. Uh, my job is to steer the boys around and, and make sure we're, we're all on the same page, heading in the right direction. And um, if things get heated, it gets heated. But, um, you know, we've got to drag them back in pretty quick and, and make sure our focus is narrowed to that result. Yeah, you, said, to, you, said the roosters, you said the Roosters are 100% the most hated team in the competition. I know you're probably joking a little bit there, but why are they the most hated team in your opinion? Oh, for us, anyways, uh, they're, look, they're our rivals. Um, look, we, we share a border with them, and um, yeah, things get obviously history of what's going on at the two clubs. Uh, there's a bit of rivalry there, obviously, as everyone knows. But um, look, they're always great games when we come up against them. Um, it's always heated. They're always tough. They're always physical. So um, yeah, I can't speak on behalf of every other club. There's obviously reasons why everyone hates them. But um, yeah, for us, it's it's about that rivalry. Just on, um, sorry, just one more question. Just on the trail, there was a bit of chat yesterday that he might spend some time in the halves during the game. Are you expecting that at all, or are you expecting him to spend most of his time at fullback? Uh, that's the first I've heard of it, so um, pretty sure he'll be at fullback. Yeah, Renault Brownie, mate. How are you, bud? Yeah, good, thanks. Mate, uh, without going too deep into the game plan, um, we're, we're obviously going into the game uh, with a rookie 5'8", and they've they're got a rookie in the halves themselves, in Kyle Flanagan. How are, we, how are we going to look to exploit him, mate? Yeah, obviously, we, we've looked at them and um, areas where we can exploit him and we think we can exploit him. And um, for us, Brandon, we, we've just got to hold the ball and make sure we get through our sets and um, apply that pressure. If we, we keep turning it over, it doesn't give us a chance to work him over and, um, you know, exploit some areas of them. But, um, yeah, it's not only him, but there's other areas of their team that we've identified that we think we can break him down and, um, we just need to hold the ball and, and make sure we, we get through our sets and, um, you know, apply pressure and, and put them on them that way. Yeah, Reno, just, just with, with our game, mate, uh, and, and the new the new rule, the six again rule, do you think it'll bring Cookie in, into the game a lot more? Yeah, I think um, if we can generate that ruck speed, um, it gives Cookie an opportunity to get out and do what he does best. His running game's a strength of ease, obviously. And, um Look, if they, they continually slow it down and, um, you know, try and milk it for everything they can, uh, they might get one in the bin and that works to our advantage as well. So um, there's a fine line there that we know we've got to 
sort of work with. And um, yeah, it's just about us getting our big boys through the middle and, and generate that momentum for Cookie. Thanks, mate.